Hi, I'm Keith Trim from Trim Photo, and I'm here with attorney Dustin Garrison to talk about the lawsuit against the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department, uh, the sheriff, and one deputy. Dustin, what are you suing for? Our lawsuit encompasses two separate causes of action. Uh, the first is a civil rights violation, uh, essentially alleging that my client's civil rights were violated by uh, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department, uh, and then both individually and in their official capacities as sheriff and as deputies of, first of all, um, Sheriff uh, Nicholas Georgie, and then secondly, as a deputy, Tommy Lee Osinger, our second cause of action uh, alleges a uh, punitive, or they were entitled to punitive damages as a result of those civil rights violations. We'll get, uh, we'll get back to that. Sure. Second question, is this a frivolous lawsuit? No, certainly not a frivolous lawsuit. We can establish uh, what we're alleging in the lawsuit. Um, as we indicated in the lawsuit, uh, even though we didn't attach to the lawsuit, the uh, message conversations, text message or Facebook messages, uh, whatever they are, we have messages and uh, and um, that type of thing to support everything that we've said. Uh, back to the, how are you able to sue them as their uh, official position and as a private person? How can you do that? Well, because we, we don't believe that governmental immunity applies to them. Um, essentially, when, you, when certain conduct occurs, uh, then you are stripped of your governmental immunity. Um, and how are you able to sue the Sheriff's Department in general? Because uh, this, the Sheriff's Department, they were acting in their official capacities at one point uh, as uh, Sheriff and or Deputy Sheriff. I do believe you have to get permission to sue the government. We don't believe you do. Once again, we believe that they're stripped of their um, civil, uh, of, their, of their immunities as a result of their conduct, number one, and number two, uh, in these particular circumstances, these alleged civil rights violations, and it's not a tort. Okay, let's get back to that. But first of all, what are, were the civil rights that were violated? Well, the civil rights are simply that he was arrested without um, without probable cause. He was arrested uh, by an officer who, or a deputy, excuse me, who had uh, a conflict of interest. He didn't properly investigate the individual. He arrested, he investigated the uh, the individual. My client, Mr. Um, Mr. Snyder. Uh, with a biased in a biased context, uh, and then he he um, essentially the the uh, sheriff knew that uh, that my client uh, or that the, the uh, alleged victim in this matter, Miss Schultz, was having adult relations with my client, uh, and he took her word at face value because he was having those adult relations. I have to get back to that right now. Sure. In your lawsuit, it states right in there that Georgia knew about it. Yes. How do you know he knew about it? We have some sources who know directly that he knew about it. I can't disclose those sources. Is it hearsay or is it real? No, hearsay hearsay is a uh, complex term. Um, it, it's real. We have legitimate sources who told us that Georgie was familiar with what was happening. And if he was familiar with it, why does it matter? Why does what matter? Why does, why does it matter he knew about it? Uh, because the, the sheriff uh, knew that, that the adult relations between the alleged victim and, and Osinger were occurring. And he also knew or should have known that Osinger was investigating my client and he should have stepped in to, uh, to preclude that investigation from, from uh, going forward. Why uh, are adult relations an issue? Well, because obviously a, a, an officer or a deputy in these circumstances who is having adult relations with an alleged victim has a propensity to believe that individual more so uh, and, it, and it interferes with his right to to um, investigate the case in an impartial and neutral manner. What investigation do we have that Osinger was biased? Well, it's just, I, I mean, it, it's in any situation in which an officer is investigating an individual, if there's a bias or a, 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 uh, any kind of uh, conflict of interest, that officer can't investigate the but case. But he was, he was made aware that an alleged assault happened, correct? He was made. He was made aware that an assault allegedly occurred, and that my client allegedly perpetrated that assault upon his uh, the per, the individual with whom he was having an adult and why relationship. Why wasn't Why wasn't that good enough for him to arrest him just for that? Well, because he's going to naturally take her side. Number one, and number two, he he did nothing to ask my client about his position in the case. So it's just a he said, she said. Not even a he said, she said. It was a she said, and Osinger didn't ask my client about his side of the story. He did nothing to investigate and, the case in a legitimate, uh, impartial manner. And somehow that delegitimizes the arrest. Absolutely, because he he based his uh, he based his 
affidavit in support of the search warrant or the arrest warrant entirely upon Ms. Schultz's story. And uh, not, he, he didn't base that at all upon my client's position in the case. Okay. Um, and, and that's that's the whole crux of our civil rights violation. And and the, the large portion of the crux of our civil rights violation, number one, and number two, the base, uh, basis upon which we're requesting punitive damages. Okay, in our text, you told me that you're suing in federal court? No, we're suing in state court, but we're suing under a federal court theory, section 1983, 42 USC 1983, okay, that's a civil I, rights violation. Because I called down the courthouse and I asked them, they said you, you filed it in district court. Correct, we filed in state court, but we're suing under section 1983, you'll see that in our in our lawsuit, it's a it's a federal provision, USC United States Code section uh, forty two or forty two United States Code section nineteen eighty three. Explain the punitive damages to me, because I know I was told you, you told me on text that this is a federal thing, but I was told in state punitive damages is considered a fine in Nebraska, and it goes back to the the county. Yeah, it's interesting because there are about four states in the United States that don't have punitive damages. Nebraska is one of those. On the other hand. Uh, punitive damages can be obtained in district in, in federal court, excuse me. And so we're bringing this case, case in state court, but under a federal law theory. And since we're bringing it under a federal law theory, we are entitled to punitive damages. So do you feel that the county needs to be punished? We believe certainly. I mean, this this occurred um, on county time. Georgie knew about what was happening. Allegedly. That's your position that it was alleged. Our position is he knew. All right. And our position is that he should have stopped this and he did nothing. Okay. And so, uh, you know, we, we believe that they're entitled, to, or excuse me, my client is entitled to damages, both uh, as a result of the civil rights violations and as a result of, and he's entitled to punitive damages as a consequence of that. Um, I think I looked up online somewhere. Are you supposed to actually pick out what your punitive damages are approximated at? What are you suing for? No. Well, we're suing for the civil rights violations and then punitives. And, and we, we, we can amend our lawsuit down the road to determine what our um, punitives might should be and so on and so forth if we oh, that's not arrive really at that about. figure. What, what kind of damage did you get for civil rights violations? Well, civil rights violations, there's never uh, necessarily a, a definite amount placed on them. I mean, a lot of civil rights uh, violations and damages and so on and so forth are left up to a jury. And so that's why we left it fairly ambiguous in terms of what we're seeking by way of damages. Okay. Um, is there anything I have not asked you you want to explain? Uh, I just, you know, I, I know that I know that you've received some criticism on your website about posting it. And uh, I understand all you're doing is reporting what, what was filed. But, um, and that's why I'm being very hard on you right now. Just so I understand. You know that. And that's fine. I can handle I, it. I, I don't, I'm not handing any snowballs here. Yeah, I can handle the criticism. I handle it all the time in court. Uh, but we have documents to support what we're, we're asserting. We have the conversations between the officer, uh, or the deputy in this case, Osinger, and we have, and, or excuse me, we have the conversations between Osinger and, and, uh, Ms. Schultz in this case to substantiate everything we've said in the lawsuit. So this is not just a flagrant, uh, lawsuit and we're not just throwing something up in the air and hoping something sticks we've got we've got the documents to support what we've okay. alleged i want to thank you for having the guts to stand up and make this interview yeah we went a little longer than i thought but i think it's be very good thank well, i appreciate you. your coverage thank you sir